In this section, we are looking at basis and dimension, and I'd like to look at a few examples before we proceed. So the first example, do the vectors u and v form a basis for R3? So two criteria we need to satisfy to be a basis. Uh, number one, we need to check that the span of u, v gives us all of R3, so that would need to be satisfied. And the second criteria we would need is we would need uh, u and v to be linearly independent. Linearly independent. Okay, so let's check the first criteria. Do these vectors span all of our three? Um, so let's do that first. So let's check the span of u and v. Okay, so let's see what does the span of u and v look like? Well, to do this, we are simply asking um, what kinds of vectors can we build when we do linear combinations of vector u times some other scalar times vector v. You know, what kinds of vectors in the x, y, z, 3 space can we get? So let's see. Well, this would say a times vector u. Vector u was 1, 2, 0. Plus b times vector v vector v was 0, 1, negative 1. We're hoping to combine those in some way and get points in R3 that look like x, y, z. So working through scalar multiplication and vector addition, on the left hand side, what do we get? Well, we get 1a, 2a, and 0a plus second vector 0b, 1b, negative 1b, and that equals x, y, z. Continuing to work through that left hand side and add things together, what we get is we get 1a plus a 0b, 2a plus 1b, and a 0a minus 1b, and supposedly that's going to equal x, y, z. Well, this really gives us uh, three systems, or three uh, equations in a linear system. So we get a 1a plus a 0b equals x. We get a 2a plus 1b equals y, and a 0a minus 1b equals z. In other words, if we put this in our augmented matrix, we just get our column vector for u, which was a 1, 2, 0, and we see that popping out right there. We get our column vector for b, 0, 1, and negative 1. We see that as our coefficients right there. And then our constants x, y, and z. And when we RREF this, well actually let's go through the steps to do that because it's a little more complicated keeping track of the x, y, and z's. Um, so first thing let's do, let's multiply negative 2 times row 1, we'll add it to row 2, and we'll put that result in row 2. Top row is unchanged. For the second row, if I'm multiplying by a negative 2 here, I'm going to get a 0, 0, and now careful, we get a negative 2x plus y. And the bottom row, bottom row is unchanged. Okay, so far so good. Lastly, let's add row 2 plus row 3 and put it in row 3. And when we do that, the first two rows are unchanged. And our third row, we get a 0, 0, and now we get negative 2x plus y plus z. And notice what this third row is saying. What this is saying, this is saying um, that we can't, we can't build vectors um, unless this negative 2x plus y plus z equals 0. 
Okay, so we're not we're not able to get so we're not able to generate all vectors x, y, z in R3. We are only able to get some of them to get certain vectors. Right? So we're only able to get certain vectors that satisfy this particular constraint of negative 2x plus y plus z equals 0. In other words, um, this tells us that the span of vector u and vector v is not equal to all of R3, therefore u and v cannot be a basis for R3.